This entire project consists of just an eight foot two by four. So there's really not much to say about materials here. There will be screw glues and a few other things, but let's get into this. The first cuts I'll make are 12 inch pieces and I'll cut three of them. These are the actual step stool tops. Next I'll make two 10 and a half inch long pieces and this is for the very bottom part of the legs. And now I'll make one nine inch cut and this will be for the back bracing. And then I'll do two seven inch long pieces, which will be for the top part of the legs. If you didn't follow along with all of that, do not worry. I'll have them all listed down in the description along with all of the tools that I use for this quick project. After cutting, I'm gonna sand it down with 120 grit sandpaper. I'm not gonna do any fine sanding with 220 grit sandpaper like I usually do because I don't mind there being texture on here for some grip on your feet. This isn't a nightstand or coffee table or anything like that. I will be sure to round out the edges like I'm doing right here though. With the two seven inch pieces, I'm gonna drill in two pocket holes facing the same way on each board. And I'm gonna do this about two inches away from each end. So I'll mark that here. And of course my DeWalt battery died and my backup battery was taken by the people who installed my floors. So I'll have to come back. On these same seven inch pieces, I'll drill in four holes facing the opposite way as those other two holes. And I'll space these an inch away from each end and then about three inches away from each end. Okay, let me just interrupt this to say that, yes, this is a lot of uh, pocket holes on one small piece of wood like this. And I would never typically do that on a more expensive or pristine piece of furniture that I would build. But this is just a little $5 step stool. But let me tell you about a different option. So we had the two holes like this, right? So you can't just go this route where you have two pocket holes going downwards. And then up here, you don't need these four that I have drawn out here. Instead, whenever you put the actual steps on top of this, you could put screws through the steps down into this and that could make things easier, but your screws will be visible from the top of your step stool, which I wanted to avoid. So I figure I'll just make a bunch of pocket holes, do it this way, just keep it all clean and everything underneath the steps. Let's get back to it. Okay, so I have four pocket holes going upwards. So I'll have a two by four going across that way and that way. So I have two pocket holes going into each piece of two by four on top. And I have two pocket holes going downwards, which will ultimately fasten to that, as you'll see coming up. That's why I did it this way. Then on the 10 and a half inch pieces I cut, I'll drill out two more holes on each board. This time they'll be an inch away from one side and three inches from that same side. Then the last piece here, the nine incher. I'm just gonna clean up the pocket holes here with a quick sanding. And with all the prep work done, I'm gonna assemble this up before I actually paint it this time. So just stack the seven inch pieces on top of the 10 and a half inch pieces with the two holes facing downward. With these on their side, I'll glue and screw them together with some two inch Craig screws. And make sure that the two holes that you drilled on the 10 and a half inch pieces are facing up and over here on the side. Then I'll do this with the other side that we made here. It's definitely best if you clamp these together. Again, I was just trying to make this a quick project and kind of winging it here. Now this extra nine inch piece that we cut is used for some extra bracing in the back. And I'm gonna use some scrap wood to help prop it up at the perfect height because you want one screw to go to the top part of the leg 
and the other screw to attach into the bottom part of the other 2x4 leg and it should be super secure. I'm gonna pre-drill the screws in here and I do that quite a bit when I do anything with Craig screws, period. It just makes it easier to finish it up later. But I did have a big problem where I could only find my long drill bit. I could not find the little half squared drill bit that I have. So I had to finagle a couple of pieces together to make this work. Let me go try to find that drill bit. So this is what I used here, a square bit with this little extension. But Craig Jig actually provides these for you, and this is a longer one, and I have a half one somewhere, which would have been perfect, but you gotta work with what you got. Here's another tip, just like I mentioned with the top and drilling all these pocket holes going upwards to prevent visible screws from the outside. If you didn't want to Craig Jig these in, you could drill them from the outside into this two by four as well through there. Again, visible screws. I'm trying to avoid that at all costs and it worked out like this flush. All we need are the actual steps for the top now, which will help anchor this side and keep them the right distance, which again, I'm gonna mount all with pocket holes. the shed over to the garage because there's a lot less sawdust in here although there's a ton of other junk so it's a little bit cleaner in the air for the staining to just be a lot smoother. Just in case you're unfamiliar the reason I pre-stain the wood before I actually stain it is because it actually reduces any blemishes and inconsistencies in the wood so it just makes it look like a really nice, flawless, high quality piece of uh, product here. After that sets for about 5 to 15 minutes, you can then apply the stain to it. So these are all drying now on top of this little diaper box here. That's pretty much all of my props now that I have two little kids running around. But those are gonna stain for, or dry for about 24 hours before I apply the polyurethane clear coat on there. I will be going with the semi-gloss so it has somewhat of a shine and a protective coat to it. So I'll see you all in 24 hours. These have now dried overnight and you can tell that they're not sticky in person once you're doing this yourself. They're not sticky any longer so now it's time for the clear coat. And I'm actually gonna clear coat the side that I think is gonna be the bottom first, so probably the uglier of the sides. And that way, whenever I flip them over to clear coat the top, the bottom might get some imperfections while it's kind of resting on something, because I don't really care that much about the bottom and I wanna get this done in a reasonable amount of time. Because two coats on this, doing front and back, you have to do one side, flip it over after a few hours, do that side, flip it over, and so forth. So. Start with the bottom so you can clear coat the top and the top can really dry and harden without it interfering with anything that it's resting on. Alright, the steps are all dry with the first coat so I'm just going to lightly sand it with a 120 grit sand sanding block and then we're gonna do a second coat just on the top and the sides. I'm not gonna worry about the bottom for a last coat because who cares? Nobody will ever see or touch it.
One thing I did realize is that I can't actually access the very back screw because the nine inch brace is blocking it. So there's different ways I could have done this. I could have added the back bracing last and done it that way, but this thing is super secure though. Children are gonna be standing on this thing, not really lifting and pulling off that wood, so we're good. I'm just gonna give one last coat of clear coat on the ends because they're a little rough and it'd be hard to wipe down later on when dusting and stuff. Thanks for checking out my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider hitting that like button down below, subscribe to see more, and I'll see you on the next one.